Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we're going to do a review of the Bank of America Cash Rewards card. It's also known as the Bank of America 123 card, and we'll kind of explain why. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of your credit cards, so how to get the most cash back, and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. So again, it's called the 123 card because it earns 1% back on all of your everyday transactions, 2% back at the grocery store, as well as wholesale clubs, and 3% back at gas stations. On the surface, this card is not too great, and a lot of people think I don't really like it just because I don't talk about it, but the main reason is because it doesn't really scale well unless you have a lot of funds with Bank of America. At the current 1-2-3 rate, the 1 and 2% aren't really competitive just because there's a lot of cards that give you 2% back on all of your transactions, cards like the City Double Cash card. The 3% back at gas stations also isn't too great just because there are cards that give you 5% back and they don't have any annual fees. So the Dux card as well as the NRA card are very good examples of this and there's no cap on gas so you can do it as much as you want and you're still getting that 5% back. Despite all this I do think it's a pretty good starter card and also a pretty good foundation card so I actually had one of these cards until I did a product change to the Better Balance Rewards card. And again, if you want a bit more information on that, we do have a few other videos talking about the Better Balance Rewards card. I don't think the product change is possible anymore, but again, it was very advantageous when I did it. The sign-up bonus is $150 or $200 after $500 of minimum spend. So again, that sounds pretty good, but there are other cards that effectively do the same thing. And with those ones, you typically earn points that are redeemable for the same amount. But the difference is that if you do want to redeem the points for more value, you can. That typically involves getting other cards though, so more travel-focused cards, but instead of just getting $150 in value, that could have been worth $300 or maybe $200. Outside of the 1, 2, 3 categories, you're not really getting any other benefits, so with a lot of other starter cards from other issuers, you still typically get something. Maybe it's extended warranty, maybe it's purchase protection, maybe it's even travel protection, but here you're not really getting anything. For example, with the Discover 8 card, it has pretty awesome purchase protection and has one of the best price protections available. Again, I don't think it's a bad starter card, but I don't think it really does well in the mid game. It might do well in the late game depending on how you want to manage your finances, and that's what we're going to talk about now. The really big benefit of this card as well as Bank of America cards is that the more money you have of Bank of America or Merrill Lynch, the more that they're going to multiply your perks. If you have less than $20,000 in assets with Bank of America, then you're going to be earning at that 1-2-3 rate. If you do have more than $20,000 though and less than $50,000, then you'll be considered gold. This means that you get a 25% bonus on your rewards, meaning that 1% is really 1.25, 2% is really 2.5, and 3 is really 3.75. If you fall into this group, then the everything else category, as well as the gas category, still don't really make sense, but for the grocery stores, as well as the wholesale clubs, it starts to get a bit interesting. With the wholesale clubs, it's pretty straightforward, just because even if you got the Costco card or Sam's Club card, you're earning 2% and 1% respectively. 2.5% versus 2% or 1%, it's a pretty logical move. For the grocery store category, it really depends, just because there are cards that earn more than this, but there are caps. So the Blue Cash Everyday card by American Express earns 3% back, but there's a $6,000 cap. This means that if you spend more than $6,000 at the grocery store, then the 1, 2, 3 card starts to come into play, but otherwise the Blue Cash Everyday card makes more sense. Moving up one level, we have Platinum. This means that you have between $50,000 and $100,000 in assets with Bank of America. The reward bonus here is 50%. This makes gas 4.5%, grocery store and wholesale clubs 3%, and everything else 1.5%. Gas as well as everything else still doesn't make any sense, but grocery stores and wholesale clubs makes a lot of sense. For grocery stores, since both cards earn 3%, you are impartial because it's the same earning rate, and it doesn't really make sense to get the Blue Cash Everyday card in this case because it's the same rate anyways, but this one isn't capped. Finally, if you have more than $100,000 in assets, then you're going to be considered Platinum Honors. This gives you a 75% bonus, meaning that you get 5.25% on gas, 3.5% on grocery stores and wholesale clubs, and 1.75% on everything else. The only one that doesn't make sense here is everything else just because it's still less than 2%, but for gas, grocery stores, and wholesale clubs, it makes a ton of sense. One really big thing you need to consider with this though is obviously you need a lot of money with Bank of America and it might not be the most optimal for you. For gas, it's 5% versus 5.25%, so that's only a 0.25% difference, so that's not really that material. If you're someone who spends a lot of money in these categories, then your opportunity cost is going to be 2% just because a lot of the other cards do have caps. 
This means that you're earning 1.5% extra. And again, if you're a restaurant owner and you're maybe buying $100,000 in food every single month, then it's going to start adding up. Some people are probably wondering why you would worry about 1.5%, especially if you're spending $100,000 in groceries every month. Over the span of a year, that's going to be 1.2 million. So again, 1.5% doesn't really sound that significant. For this specific example, the profit margin for restaurants is typically between 3 to 5%. This means that 1.5%, which is basically free money if you do fall into this category, adds up quite a bit. I think this card also makes sense if you're someone who doesn't want to deal with too many cards and you just want to have one card. But again, if you're willing to optimize a bit and have a few different cards, I think you can just get a lot more value. Overall, I don't think it's a bad card. I think it's a pretty good starter card. It's a good foundation card to keep long term, but in the middle, especially if you don't have the 100k in assets, it just doesn't really make that much sense. Once you start hitting that point where you have a ton of assets and you stop caring or maybe you still just want to optimize for very specific categories, then I think it's fine. As a side note, if you are looking to apply for this card and you want to support our channel, we do have referral links on our website. It really helps if you apply through them. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.